Hey guys, it's going to be again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to show you the Oculus prototype that I've been working on for the last couple of days. I show you the virtual reality draw component that I created. Also, how I could debug it through the editor, how we can draw in the editor, and also how I was able to draw in the actual device. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how I can add more colors to the implementation. I can also show you how the Unity event works, how we can pass in a type through a Unity event, and how we can actually apply that to the implementation. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so let me show you some of the things that I added in this version of my new VR experience. So as you can see, I now have more colors. I used to have basically two rows, which is the two ones on the top. Let me go ahead and zoom in so you can see. And then the ones that I added are the ones on the bottom. So the other thing that I also wanted to add was to be able to change the minimum distance between each point. So by default, I had it set to a very low number, meaning that whenever you're drawing a line, it's going to draw a line that is very smooth. And if I change the minimum, it's basically going to make a line that is more like a square type line. It's more fine and it doesn't have a, as much detail. And that will be helpful for things like if you want to draw a square, you want to draw a triangle or any any kind of straight line that you need to draw in the VR experience. So. In this video, what I want to show you is in addition to what I what I show you here that I added, I also want to show you how I can add new colors, how I can add new components, and also some of the properties on these two new components. The other thing that I started working on is basically the canvas that you see right here. And this is right now very basic, but my goal is to be able to point to this drop down. And by default, I'm going to have brush options. So meaning that if I have that selected, this is going to be the menu that shows as an overlay on the controller. But if I change that to, say, brush motion or other ideas that I have in mind, it's going to basically change this menu. So for motion, I'm going to have things like I can apply a motion to, to the paintbrush. And what that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to be able to draw in a circular manner. I might be able to draw, you know, if I want to do cosine versus sign or if I want to do up and down, left and right. So I have a few ideas of what to include in the motions. So that's what that's going to be. And then for now, I just have a few placeholders that I'm going to include. So let me show you that this works just with the colors that I that I added. So I'm just going to hit play and show you how it looks. And let's wait until this is loaded. So now I can see that if we go ahead and let me go ahead and zoom into the controller. And then what I'm going to do is, and I mentioned this before, the way that this works is I can run it in the editor mode and I don't have to run it in the VR game, and I don't, which means that I don't have to push it to the device until I'm ready to do so. So I can press the A key and then the X key for the left control, A key for the right controller. So if I zoom in and I were to basically press the down arrow, I can also go through and cycle through colors. I can go up to cycle back. So this is another new feature that I added. I wanted to cycle through colors. I also wanted to go back. And the way that this works in the device is I can use the thumbstick to do that as well. So if, if I go back in here and we go back in. So now I have, you know, I have the option to change the new point distance. I can go here as well and hold the R key. So the R key, it's going to select that as the color for the brush. If I let go of the R key, it's going to not have that animation. So I added that animation because I wanted to show that that was going to be the color that was selected. For now, it's it's enough. I think it gives me enough information to know that, you know, the color is actually selected. So and then if I go and cycle through, I can, of course, change the line width, go back here, select another color and then, you know, hide it and show it. So this is exactly what I what I had before. So let me show you how easy it is if I wanted to add new colors. And this is a way that I that I set it up so that I can change and add more features without having to do much coding. All right, so if I look at the left hand anchor and the right hand anchor, I have a VR controller options, which I showed you previously. And the way that, it, that this works for now, and it's going to 
It's probably going to improve. For now, I think this is a good setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to resize the the background, the placeholder that I have on the background, and I'm selecting both backgrounds to do that. So let's say that I wanted to add maybe another row of colors. I think if I do something like that, will fit OK. And then I can just add the select the minimum distance the slider label, and then the same thing on the other controller. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to move it down a little bit more, and something like that. So if I want to add a new color, all I have to do, because each one of these components has a VR draw color, all I have to do is basically duplicate them, and then the game is going to define, it's going to find that because it's actually doing a search for any child of the VR color options that have a VR draw color. And so all I have to do, to be honest, is just, so if I do, let's see if I can do this all at once. If I duplicate that and duplicate, yep, and that works. And all I have to do is just basically move it down. And, and then that's basically it. So now what I need to do is I can go back here and just rename it to color so that everything is nice and clean. I'm going to move these ones up so it's aligned with everything else. Also move this one. And then now what I can do is I can start, OK, I know that I added these two as new colors. So if I select that one, you can see that that's that color. And then I can also select the fourth from the bottom. So if I wanted to change that, let me make sure that I can move. OK, so I selected the wrong one on. Let me make sure that I'm selecting. So that one is the right one there. And then it looks like this one. Looks like this one got out of, out of sync. Let me go ahead and do that one more time. Because I don't want to, I want to make sure that I'm changing the proper colors. It's going to undo, and then undo. We can undo again. There we go. So instead of doing what I just did, I'm just going to select these ones, duplicate them, and then I'll do the same thing on this one. And then what I'll do, I'll go back here and then just do what I just showed you, which is going to be to rename them. Awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up. And then I know that this one, it's the orange type color and then blue. Let me make sure that these ones, yeah, I think these ones, when I duplicate them, it changed the order. But that's okay. I think I can, I can manage. I can move this one up. I know that that's the second one. And then I know that this is going to be, it's going to be the last one. So I'm going to move it down. So let me make sure that they are all aligned. And these ones are also out of sync. This one, it's going to be the third one. So I'm just going to move that one down. This one is the second one, third one, and fourth. OK. And of course, we could rename these ones if we wanted to and, and make it more intuitive. I think for now, this is fine. All right, so now if I want to change the colors, let's say that I want to introduce a new color. And the other thing that I haven't done in a, is I need to move them. So let me go ahead and move them down. And there we go. Do something, something like that works. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the first one that I want to rename. And not rename, but actually change the color. So I can just compare and see, okay, which color don't I, I don't have yet. And I'm just going to go and randomly pick one. I think that one works. And now if we go if we go to this one, and, and the reason why I'm doing it this way, it's, it's more for prototyping. And of course, I could add, you know, something more complicated where I can basically have a color picker like this. But I think for now, I think this is just going to work just fine. I think we can just do a different type of green, maybe a, a darker green, or let me see. I can do a darker green. I think we don't have that. And then I can do this one as well. And this one, it's going to be, and let me see what I can do here. I have a white, and we can probably just do a darker color because I don't have black right now, but a black is really hard to see. So I'll do a dark gray. There we go. I think that works. And then the last one that I'll do, I'll just pick another color that we haven't selected yet. And then this last one we can do, let's see what I don't have. I think something like that. And I have orange already and red. And I'm really bad with colors, so I'm not going to tell you what that is. But I don't have that one yet, and I know that because I'm looking at the at the other color. So that's basically all it takes if I want to add more colors. And the same thing with the sliders. If I want to add new sliders, all I have to do is just copy and duplicate them, copy and duplicate them. So one thing that I need to show you that I did in this 
in this version is anytime that I'm sending an event, for instance, if I'm selecting this color, I need to find out, you know, I need to actually pass the color that I'm sending through. And, and that I'm doing with uh, a simple Unity event. And I'm gonna show you this implementation so that you can see. So the way this works is behind the scenes, I have a color change event. And that is a class that is inheriting from my Unity event. And the generic type, it's of type color. And that's why when I'm selecting a meta, which is bound to the VR, right? There's a method called update line color, and that method takes in a color as a parameter. So I wasn't sure how to do this. I couldn't do it with by using a Unity event by itself. I had to create a class that inherit from that, and then the class was basically taking a generic. So let me show you how that works. So if we go into that class, it's it's fairly simple. So like I said, I needed to inherit. So the way that I structure this is I have multiple events as some you know, some working on I'm some working on the this experience. So if you look at one of the attributes, which is VR draw color change, right now it just shows you, you know, we're binding to to that method. And then right here I'm saying, okay, if it's null, then don't do anything. But if it's not null, invoke the method and then pass in the color of the raw image that is basically associated through the inspector. So but let me show you the implementation of the VR color change. And and this is how it works. You have to create a class and that class is going to inherit from unity event and unity event takes in a generic so in my case I needed to pass in a color so that's why I am I am passing in a color because the method that I'm going to be calling needs to take in a color and that's the color that I'm going to use to set the line render so that's honestly everything that I wanted to show you in this video guys if you guys have any questions please let me know thank you all right guys thank you much for watching this video i really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what i just showed you please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where i'm posting information about what i'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code thank you very much guys